Now that the biodiesel has been transferred to the finishing tank, the cleaning tank, we can clean the biodiesel and get it ready for use. A few notes about the tank. Just go down to the bottom here where the ports are. So there's two outlets to the tank. One here and then one over here. This one here connects into the bottom of the tank and basically would allow you to drain the tank completely. Okay, this one over here is connected to a stand pipe, a six inch pipe that sits at about this point in the biodiesel. And so that's where we'll get the finished product off of later. So we take, we don't take the biodiesel right from the bottom because contaminants can settle on the bottom. We take it up a little bit, we take it up uh, six inches and then you're always getting clean fuel. Okay. So the clean fuel comes down here into the pump. We can either just take it directly off with gravity. If you're just filling a jerry can or something, or you can run it through the pump and then under pressure through a filter here, which we'll show in, in a little bit, and then through our, our gas pump. Into the vehicle or into a jerry can or whatever. So that's it, we'll get into some of the cleaning details now. When biodiesel is processed, it contains, it still contains byproducts, uh, traces of the methanol that we put in. One of the byproducts, the main byproducts is soap. It's a byproduct of the reaction that happens when the glycerin is split from the oil. Uh, and again, not getting into too much of the chemistry and the math, but if you use too much catalyst, you can get too much soap. Uh, if you have a perfect reaction, you won't get any soap, but that's pretty difficult to do, especially in a home-built machine like this. All right, the first note on cleaning is uh, as the biodiesel is sitting here, and it's been sitting for a couple of days since I transferred it over here, some of the glycerin will still continue to settle out. We've got 95% of it out in the previous steps, but one of the reasons why we do have a bottom port here is so that we can just open it up slowly and drain off any remaining gunk. This looks pretty clean. There's, that's all biodiesel. So there's not a lot of glycerin settling out of there. If it was black for a second or two, we'd know that there was glycerin there, but it looks to be all clear stuff. I'll use a little plug in there just so it doesn't drip. I use a little jug like this because what I can do is we get a mix of glycerin and biodiesel in here, and then you can just pour it back into the the the, uh, the waste oil tank and run it through the process again, so you don't waste it. You don't have to throw it away. Okay, so once you're not getting any waste product off the bottom, talk a little bit about cleaning. So you don't want soap, you don't want glycerin, you don't want methanol. All those things can do bad things to things like fuel injectors. You want pure biodiesel. So the first way I set this up was with water washing. There's different ways to wash biodiesel. I use these little Arizona misters and there's a, just a standard hose connection at the back of the machine here, which you can hook a garden hose up to and you mist water, you mist water. The water mist just comes down and passes through the biodiesel. And because water's heavier than diesel, water's heavier than oil, as that mist, as those little water droplets pass through the biodiesel, they pick up contaminants. So they'll pick up trace elements of soap and methanol and glycerin and all kinds of other junk. And the water will then settle on the bottom, at which point, once it's settled, 
you can use the bottom port here and pour off the wash water, the dirty water. I don't use that anymore. That's a bit of a messy way to do it because then you have to get rid of this oily, messy, soapy, chemical contaminated water. And how do you do that? So I've abandoned water washing in favor of dry washing or a form of dry washing. Now, the best way to, another way to, to clean biodiesel and probably the best way, but also the most expensive is to buy wash towers. Wash towers that the biodiesel passes through and there are, um, there's a filter, there's filter media in there that filters out the contaminants. Those are expensive and they take up quite a bit of room, but that's a really good way to go. And I think it's the way a lot of home brew, home biodiesel brewers are going. I've opted for a different form of dry washing. We'll start here. That black thing is a hot tub air pump. It's basically like a big blower, like a big hair dryer. Now you could also use a shop vac on, on the blow mode, but a shop vac running for a couple of hours could produce sparks and could get hot and could uh, cause a fire, I think. So I've opted for these, this hot tub pump, which was about a hundred bucks, but these are designed to run for long periods of time in hot tubs. They don't get hot. Uh, they deliver a really nice stream of air. Not quite like a leaf blower, but pretty, pretty close. They, they move a lot of air. So I've got that connected up to just a plug that I plug in at the bottom when I want to turn it on. And what that does is it blows air up this PVC tube and then it turns around and goes into the tank, into the tank and down into the bottom of the biodiesel where there's a T. Now I don't know if you can see the T but it's a PVC T that has a bunch of holes drilled in it. Okay. And so what happens, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute, is air goes out of these 30 or 40 or maybe 50 holes and bubbles up through the biodiesel. It basically evaporates any trace methanol that's suspended in the biodiesel. Okay, what that does is once the methanol is gone, and again, I'm not a chemist, I'm not going to get into the chemistry, mostly because I don't understand it, but the absence of methanol then results in the soap and glycerin and anything else that may be in that biodiesel to not be able to hang on to the biodiesel. So it just with gravity, it just settles out to the bottom. And once that happens, we can use our bottom port to drain off that garbage and then have further confidence that we've taken more contaminants and byproducts out of the diesel and we are ready to use our standpipe here to remove finished product for final use. So that's it, air washing, some people call it dry washing because you're, you're drying, uh, you're washing the biodiesel without water pretty clean, much cleaner than water washing, much less expensive and uh, space consuming as the big wash towers that you can buy. And that's what we'll demonstrate next. We'll get into some air washing of our finished product. All right, let's have a look at the dry wash process. So again, the air comes out of the pump and into here and then straight down a PVC tube into the bottom. And there's a T at the bottom with holes drilled in it so that when we turn the air on, the air vigorously flows up through the biodiesel and evaporates the methanol. Now there's the pump, it's just a plug here. We'll plug it in, okay, turns the pump on, 
You can see all the air going through. Okay, let's have a look up top here. There's a lot of air going through there. So any anything that's in there, uh, methanol-wise, is going to be evaporated out. Just close this like that. Now I have an old bed sheet here, just to kind of put over top like that. And why do I do that? Well, there's a hole in it over here. Well, if you don't do that, the vapor coming out is a little bit oily and you'll find uh, like an oily mist settling on your vehicles and on your floor and everything else. So there is a little bit of oily mist that comes out. So having this sheet kind of captures the, still allows the air to come out. The air is still, the air is still coming through, but the oil droplets are caught in the sheet. And over time that sheet gets oily and I throw it away and get a new one. So I do this for about two hours. Let it run for about two hours. With ventilation, I usually open the garage door. I don't want uh, methanol vapors floating around. So lots of ventilation. And, uh, and that'll evaporate the methanol and allow more impurities to settle out. step now that the fuel is done in our finishing tank uh, again from the standpipe here we come into the pump so we can open up this valve that'll let fuel into the pump and then out of the pump through this farm filter I think it's like a 10 micron filter or something it's the farm diesel filter and valve can be open now as well and then into the car now you can gravity drain it which is what I'm going to do here because I have some extra time just put this in the car here there we go TDI TDI this switch. And then it goes under pressure like, a, like at a gas station. But I'll often just use gravity. I'll just show you what this looks like. Just... That's about the rate that it comes out at just under gravity pressure, which isn't too bad. It, it'll fill your tank up pretty quick without the pump. Especially when you've got a lot of fuel in the in the finished tank because there's lots of gravity pressure. Use the old gas pump trick. Typically I run about 50% biodiesel and 50% regular diesel. Um, kind of split it. I do that for a couple reasons. One, because I'm always concerned that I get a bad batch of biodiesel. It's always tested good and it always works well. But what if something happened in the process and I didn't catch it? I figure if you're burning 50% petroleum diesel, you, you have a bit of a margin of safety there in that um, even bad biodiesel, I think, would you'd be able to get through it. Uh, where if you have 100% biodiesel and it's bad, you might have some issues. Also for temperature control in the winter, like I might run a lower blend, uh, 30 or 40% in the winter, and then watch the forecast, right? And if the forecast is trending toward being colder, um, then what I can do is, is before it gets cold, I can top the tank up with petroleum diesel, winter diesel at the, at the gas station. Uh, and vice versa, if, uh, if, the weather forecast looks good, then I can inch up the biodiesel content to maybe 50 or 60 percent and just kind of keep some capacity in the tank. Keep the, I run the tank usually about half, half full. That way there's always some capacity to either top the vehicle up with 
winter diesel if it's going to get cold or with more biodiesel if the temperature is going to stay warm. Well, thanks for watching this series. I hope you learned something. If you did, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on this TDI. I'm doing some performance upgrades on it. And, um, and that's something you might enjoy. The, the final thing I just thought of with regard to biodiesel is the, um, the exhaust. I guess you could say the strength of the smell of the exhaust. I find it goes down quite a bit with with uh, with biodiesel, even if you've got 10 or 20 percent blend blended in, the exhaust just seems to be. I don't know if it makes sense to say easier to breathe. Like it's not as intense smelling. And if you burn 100 percent biodiesel, then it really smells um, a lot less. People say it some sometimes smells like French fry oil. I don't think so. I think it just smells like really like you know unscented diesel, if that makes sense. It's still a diesel smell, but it's it's much uh, much less uh, strong, much less offensive. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching this series, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. All right, here's the biodiesel. You can see how much fuel I have now. It was right on empty. The um, the light had been on for quite a while, so this is 100% biodiesel right now. We're going to the gas station right now to uh, to fill up with some petroleum diesel we're in third gear we've got the air conditioning on this is third gear about 1500 rpm so let's get on it 100% biodiesel fourth gear so this car is pulling just like it does with regular diesel they say that biodiesel has a little bit less heat value in it uh, you know so you lose a little bit of power it's but it's really not perceptible again we'll go full throttle here at, at 80 kilometers an hour just over 2,000 rpm okay full throttle one two three full we're going up a hill too come up on an Audi okay brakes 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 there we go so there you go the fuel is less noxious in smell, and it doesn't smoke as much either. YouTube hasn't installed this, the smell app yet, so I can't show you, but take my word for it. So I'm going to go put maybe 20 liters of regular fuel in it. It'll be about a 50-50 mix uh, in terms of fuel then, and that way we'll, uh, we'll get some of the benefits of the biodiesel. Also having some regular diesel in there just in case it gets cold again and just in case my fuel is no good but the way this car is running the fuel seems just fine thank you